day 3 pressure design of piping this is a third topic which we are discussing in asme 31.3 awareness course as we have done in day 1 and day 2 we'll start with safety talk then we'll cover these three subtopics we'll try to understand the pressure design basics then what are the various factors which are affecting the pipe wall thickness then design equation and few examples in the end, we'll have a quiz on these three topics so that we can understand uh, these topics in detail. We can uh, check our understanding. There will be few multiple choice questions. Uh, around 20 questions will be there. Along with the correct answer, we'll look into the detailed explanation to the correct answers also. So in the end, we'll see what we are going to cover in day four. So let's uh, welcome our friend Peter, who will be explaining us uh, all these three subtopics we'll start with safety talk so let's begin hello everyone today we'll talk about an important topic slips trips and falls prevention clean work areas keeping our work areas clean and organized is crucial pick up any clutter tools or materials from the floor to prevent tripping hazards watch for wet floors if there's a spill or wet floor make sure it's cleaned up promptly Use proper signage to warn others about the slippery surface. Walk cautiously, be cautious while walking on slippery surfaces. Take small, slow steps and avoid sudden movements to maintain your balance. Upper footwear, wear shoes with good traction that fit well. Avoid wearing shoes with worn out soles, as they can increase the risk of slipping. Use handrails, when using stairs, always hold on to the handrail for support. This will help prevent slips and falls while going up or down. Report hazards, if you notice any hazards like loose tiles, damaged flooring, or spills, report them to your supervisor immediately, so they can be addressed. Let's all work together to prevent slips, trips, and falls and create a safe environment for everyone. Hello and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we're going to explore an essential aspect of piping design, understanding pressure design basics. Pressure design forms the foundation of a safe and reliable piping system. Let's, let's dive into the key concepts. Design pressure is the maximum pressure that a piping system is designed to handle safely under normal operating conditions. This pressure ensures that the system can function without risking failure. Pressure ratings are crucial for piping component fittings. These ratings indicate the maximum allowable pressure that a component can withstand. Ensuring that components are selected with sufficient pressure ratings is vital for the system's integrity. Stress is the force experienced by the pipe wall per unit area. Allowable stress is the maximum stress a material can withstand without failing under design conditions. It's important to consider both stress and allowable stress to ensure the pipe's structural integrity. To account for uncertainties and variations in operating conditions, safety factors are applied to design calculations. These factors provide an extra margin of safety in the design. Wall thickness is a critical design parameter. It is determined based on factors such as design pressure, material properties, and safety factors. The right wall thickness is as for handling the specified pressure safely. Sustained loads are permanent loads that the piping system experiences during operation, while occasional loads are temporary or intermittent. Both types of loads must be considered in the design to ensure the system's stability and longevity. ASME B31.3 provides guidelines and codes for pressure design. These codes ensure that the piping system is designed to meet safety and performance requirements. Flexibility analysis evaluates the pipe's ability to handle thermal expansion and contraction. Proper flexibility ensures that the pipe can accommodate temperature changes without straining or causing damage. Reinforcement involves adding extra material to areas with high stress to enhance strength and prevent failure. This technique enhances the pipe's ability to handle pressure and stress. 
Nozzle loads re refer to the loads imposed on equipment nozzles connected to the piping. Proper analysis and consideration of these loads are essential to prevent damage to equipment and piping. Flange leakage prevention is crucial to avoid leaks at flanged connections when the system is under pressure. Proper gasket selection, bolt tightening, and installation are key factors in preventing leakage. Expansion joints are flexible components that absorb thermal expansion and contraction, allowing the piping system to accommodate temperature changes without excessive stress. Finally, pressure testing is performed to ensure that the piping can handle the design pressure. This testing verifies the system's integrity and confirms its ability to withstand the specified pressure. That wraps up today's video. In our next topic, we'll delve into the factors affecting pipe wall thickness. So, stay tuned and keep learning. Hello and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. In today's session, we're going to dive into an important aspect of piping design, factors affecting pipe wall thickness. The thickness of a pipe's wall plays a crucial role in ensuring the safety and reliability of the piping system. Let's explore the key factors that influence pipe wall thickness. Design pressure. One of the primary factors is the design pressure of the piping system. Higher design pressure often requires thicker walls to withstand the increased force and stress. Material properties, the properties of the chosen material impact wall thickness. Stronger materials may allow for thinner walls, while weaker materials may necessitate thicker walls to handle the same pressure. Corrosion allowance. To account for potential corrosion over the system's lifespan, an additional thickness corrosion allowance is added to the pipe's wall. Temperature Elevated temperatures can affect material strength and expansion, potentially requiring thicker walls to accommodate thermal stresses. External loads External loads, such as weight from surrounding structures or equipment, impact the stress and strain on the, the pipe's wall, influencing the required wall thickness. Code requirements, regulatory codes and standards often dictate minimum wall thickness based on design pressure, material, and other factors to ensure safety and reliability. Stress analysis, complex piping systems undergo stress an analysis to determine potential stress concentrations. Thicker walls might be needed to manage stress effectively. Welding, welded joints are points of potential stress concentration. Thicker walls may be necessary in these areas to maintain structural integrity. Fabrication methods, different fabrication methods, such as seamless or welded construction, can influence the required wall thickness. Fluid properties, the properties of the fluid being transported, such as density, viscosity, and corrosiveness, can impact the wall thickness required to handle the fluid's characteristics. Understanding these factors and their interactions is crucial for designing a piping system with the appropriate wall thickness to ensure its safe and reliable operation. That wraps up today's video. In our next topic, we'll delve into pressure design equations and examples. So stay tuned and keep learning. Hello and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. In today's session, we're going to dive into a fundamental aspect of pressure design, pressure design equations and examples. Understanding how to calculate the required wall thickness for a piping system is essential for ensuring its safety and reliability. Let's explore the key concepts. Barlow's formula, this equation, named after its developer, provides a way to calculate the minimum required wall thickness of a pipe based on the design pressure, material properties, and safety factors. It takes into account both longitudinal stress, which runs along the length of the pipe, and hoop stress, which acts circumferentially around the pipe. 
Longitudinal stress. This stress component occurs along the length of the pipe and is caused by the internal pressure of the fluid being transported. It's a critical factor in determining the required wall thickness. Hoop stress. Hoop stress is the stress that acts around the circumference of the pipe due to internal pressure. It's another crucial factor in pressure design. Stress intensification factors, these are additional factors applied to the calculated stresses to account for stress concentration at points like welds, fittings, and other discontinuities in the piping system. To illustrate these concepts, let's walk through a pressure design example. We'll use Barlow's formula to calculate the required wall thickness for a specific piping system. Following the steps, you'll gain a better understanding of how pressure design equations are applied in practice. So, without further ado, let's jump into the pressure design example. Walk through the pressure design example step by step, showing calculations using Barlow's formula. And there you have it. By using Barlow's formula and considering factors like longitudinal stress, hoop stress, and stress intensification factors, we've determined the required wall thickness for our piping system. This calculated thickness ensures that the system can safely handle the design pressure. That wraps up today's video. In our next topic, we'll explore the different types of loads on piping systems. So, stay tuned and keep learning.
so thanks peter for uh, taking us through these three subtopics of pressure design and piping so by this we have completed our day 3 in day 4 we are going to cover the piping loads and stresses again we'll be having three subtopics we'll see uh, types of loads on piping system stress categories and allowable stresses stress intensifying uh, intensification factors again we'll start with safety talk and we'll have quiz in the end which will be having 20 multiple questions then uh, we'll have correct answers and explanation to that so i'm sure this uh, format is okay with all of you uh, so we'll uh, go through this format only throughout uh, these 30 days so this was all about for today's video see you in the next part